I'd like to make a few clarifications about the ATP count that we get from glucose in total aerobic cellular respiration. And when we say aerobic, we mean that oxygen is the final electron acceptor and that it's not short-circuited by a lack of oxygen availability. I have taught in the past that every NADH caches in for three ATPs. So when we look at these NADHs that are released from glycolysis from glucose going to pyruvate, I would have the number two times three is equal to six ATP. That's what I used to add up. There are two ATP that are generated in glycolysis. If we go down to the reaction converting pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, which is the, that step moving into the mitochondrion, if we have two NADHs that cash in at three, then once again, I would get six ATPs uh, generated in the electron transport chain. Going down to the Krebs cycle, if I pick up six NADHs out of the Krebs cycle, six times three would be 18. And remember we pick up two ATPs generated in two turns. This involves two turns of the Krebs cycle. And then lastly, the cash in for riboflavin to the conversion factor I've used in the past was two. Two times two is would be four. And so the new number or actually excuse me let me rephrase that the old number that i would come up with was 38 and not 32. so let's look at this for just a minute two plus six is what say it out loud eight, uh, eight plus six is 14, 14 plus two 16. 16 and 16 plus 18 34 and then four more 38. So this is the old count, 38 A2P per molecule of glucose breakdown in aerobic respiration. But what I read in my one of my textbooks is that there is a different conversion that is being used. Maybe it's just more complete, or maybe I've just gotten up to date. I've escaped out of the 1990s to the 2017s. That's very possible for old man Barnes, somebody like me. What we learned is that recently, what I have learned, let's rephrase that, is that NADH transports about 10 protein, uh, protons, and then FADH transports six, so we're talking about niacin and riboflavin, and then it takes four protons to generate an ATP. So in each one of these conditions, if we take the the niacin, the 10 divided by four, we get two and a half ATP generated. We look at um, riboflavin, six divided by four is 1.5. And that is the newer system that I am looking at now. And so as you will notice, uh, two times 2.5 is five, two times 2.5 is five, and down in the Krebs cycle, six times 2.5 is 15, two times 1.5 is three. We get a, co a total count of 32 ATPs. I have another video that just only talks about this new system right here, but just for a second, I wanted to go and compare the new, the new information that I have with the old what I used to bust out. And there may be other variabilities. I'm sure that the biochemists that have learned all of this could tell us more intricate details, but for people like you and me, this is probably a nice explanation. Thank you, keep coming back.